Right, thank you. Um, so just a show of hands, how many people are routinely using pedal access as part of their uh, treatment for PAD? So hard to see in the dark room, but looks like a few, few folks. So I'm going to give you sort of the approach that I use and some of the basic um, uh, things to think about. So first is the indications. And you've seen a lot of this already uh, today. Uh, really, the obvious indication would be critical limb ischemia, where you want to recanalize the tibial uh, and even the femoral popliteal vessels, generally with the assistance of a, a sheath. There's also a role for pedal access when you really want to focus just on pedal circulation uh, or recanalize the tibial vessels, but you may not be able to put a sheath in. More controversial, and we touched upon this earlier in, in some of the presentations, is the risk-benefit ratio that you have to take in consideration for non-CLI access. So likely, it helps to have a conversation with the patient about risks and benefits for non-CLI pedal access before you do it ad hoc. So the big question is, do you use ultrasound or fluoroscopy? And uh, really, fluoroscopy, the advantages it has, it's minimal uh, equipment requirement. You can actually puncture vessels that sometimes are difficult to isolate by ultrasound, uh, useful for perineal, or if you do t high tibial axis, a high anterior tibial axis, for instance, uh, fluoro can be helpful. Uh, but the, the cons are really parallax error can be a problem. So sometimes it can require multiple passes. Um, and you know the vessels may be filled poorly. You may have little information just by fluoroscopy uh, as to the anatomic characteristics of the vessel. And we'll we'll show you an example where uh, the radiation becomes an issue. What about ultrasound guided? This is my preference, uh, but you know it, you'll see that you can do it either way. Uh, direct visualization of the vessel is always helpful. You can uh, select the puncture site. Uh, in terms of less calcium on the vessel wall. Uh, you can use power Doppler to visualize uh, vessels that have minimal flow. But it does have a bit of a learning curve, uh, and I'd suggest those of you who do radial uh, catheterization, go ahead and practice ultrasound for your radial punctures uh, just to get the feel of uh, doing it, uh, and so that can help you later translate to pedal access. Uh, and it helps to have a high-frequency transducer, hockey stick uh, transducer, and uh, uh, there are needles that help you visualize what you're doing. The big issue is always how to position the patient. Well, obviously, you want the foot uh, to be uh, under the uh, image intensifier, and uh, you, know, you want to dorsiflex and rotate out your foot for the posterior tibial artery and you want to plantar uh, flex for the foot for the dorsalis pedis. This exposes the vessel and straightens it for access. Your equipment, um, you know, you can use, if you're going to do fluoro guided, go ahead and have a pencil Doppler, the ones uh, the nurses use on the floors uh, to uh, isolate the pulses. You can just use a regular pencil Doppler, couple that with a fluoro roadmap, and that can help you identify where you want to puncture. Uh, the kits now have everything you need, a micro sheath, dilator, uh, and you can decide what you want to uh, uh, place. Be judicious with lidocaine, just like you are for the radial uh, access. Use you know, one cc at most. Uh, generously give vasodilator systemically or in the vessel from above. You can even consider local injection of uh, nitroglycerin if needed. So uh, the transducer that I use is a hockey stick uh, transducer. It allows you to image the vessel. It's lightweight. You can use uh, one operator to do everything. Um, and then when you're getting access, don't get too shallow or too steep. Use a 60 degree angle. Uh, and if you get too steep, the wire's going to hit the back wall of the vessel and it'll be difficult to puncture. I like using the uh, short axis view, but some people use the long axis view. I think for the initial puncture, short axis makes sense. Uh, here's an example of uh, a long axis puncture using the true Seldinger technique of going through and coming back. And here you're going to see the wire, and you can actually visualize the wire going up. So what are your choices? Uh, the two sheaths that I use the most are the, the four French Turumo sheath and uh, the 2.9 French Cook sheath. Uh, they basically come with what you need um, uh, all together. Uh, you can um, fairly easily insert these sheaths. Uh, the Turumo sheath has a hydrophilic coating. 
And here's an example. Here's an occluded uh, posterior tibial uh, vessel. Uh, approximately, there's no clear stump, so we want to uh, do a retrograde puncture. And you don't have to insert the entire sheath. That's an important point. Even if you have a little bit of the vessel, just insert as much of the sheath as you can and then secure it. Uh, in this case, we're infusing uh, vasodilators from the sidearm. And here, we're able to just use a little bit of sheath, get our wire and support catheter through, and recanalize this vessel. Where can you stick? So uh, the obvious choices would be the posterior tibial artery, the anterior tibial artery, and the dorsalis pedis. In general, uh, sticking the plantar vessels directly uh, is not fruitful. Uh, you can uh, get access to the first metatarsal artery into the plantar circulation. It's obviously a, a very challenging technique, but uh, it can be done. Big question is always, what do you do with hemostasis? During the case, I'm, I'm fairly aggressive with uh, anticoagulation. These are small vessels. Uh, so I shoot for an ACT close to 300. Uh, I'm very uh, mindful of, of vasoconstriction. So either you can use a slow infusion of vasodilators through the sidearm or just frequently flush. Um, after the case, if it's a distal, uh, you know, two-thirds of the uh, 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 leg, you can you go ahead and use a manual pressure. Many of the radial hemostasis bands that are now available work quite well. And if you do a high tibial stick, for instance, uh, anti-grade balloon tamponade is, is the way to go. So here's a, a couple of cases in the next uh, few minutes. This is uh, a patient who's typical of my practice, uh, 48 years old, uh, young, with diabetes, and already has had uh, end-stage renal disease and a renal transplant. He's had a transmetatarsal amputation, not healing. Here's what he also has is multi-level disease with a CTO, which is relatively short of his superficial femoral artery, proximal tibial disease, and then really no inline tibial flow uh, with CTOs of all the vessels. Faint reconstitution of his dorsalis pedis. So we're able to cross. I use uh, quite a bit of crossing catheters uh, for my work. Uh, I just have higher success rates with them. So we use a crossing catheter, directional atherectomy, and then drug-coated balloon. Uh, we tried at the same setting, we had to be mindful of his renal function to uh, cross the anterior tibial uh, CTO, uh, got into the subintimal space, and uh, given his uh, renal limitations, we decided to bring him back a few weeks later. At that point, uh, I had a contralateral sheath placed and then used ultra ultrasound guided uh, left DP access. What you always want to do after you get a pedal axis is go ahead and do a 50-50 contrast injection through the pedal sheath. And the reason for that is it better defines the distal cap, the extent of the CTO, uh, gives you a better idea what the distal vessel looks like. So it, it, it's really helpful to do a, a, a gentle injection uh, through the distal sheath. Uh, crossing, we cross retrograde through, with a, a blunt dissection catheter. Uh, externalized the wire, uh, put down a, um, a viper wire, did uh, orbital atherectomy of the anterior tibial artery. After that, it's just a simple angioplasty. Now, once you uh, finish, you often see these little defects in the, in the uh, vessel, and the question is, okay, what is that? Is that a dissection, spasm? You know, all you have to do is pull your wire back, give nitro, and 90% of the time, that's where the sheath entered, and uh, it's going to vasodilate and do just fine. A couple other tip tips. Uh, during your completion angiogram, you may see slow flow, but go ahead and remove the sheath and then do your angio, or actually aspirate with a 10 cc off the sidearm while you do the angiogram. It's just a matter of having that sheath in, in place that might be uh, impacting your flow. So, you know, he took him about 12 weeks, but he healed up quite well. In the remaining minute, I want to show you the uh, use of fluoroguided, and in this case, I used a pencil Doppler. This is a uh, patient with a left a great toe uh, wound, uh, occluded anterior tibial artery, reconstitutes distally into a diseased dorsalis pedis. Uh, failed anti-grade approach in part because of this uh, uh, big collateral, um, and so we did a fluoro roadmap and used a pencil Doppler to isolate the pulsation and then just stuck uh, without using ultrasound. 
and you see uh, it, it, the wire relatively easily uh, passes through. But the point here is look at my hands uh, here. Uh, and if you do enough of this, you're going to get enough radiation to your hands. So, you know, they have leaded gloves. Consider that and, you know, be mindful of the amount of radiation you're getting. The cath lab is not set up to protect you uh, with, you know, the foot all the way under the uh, detector. So after that, it's just a matter of uh, going retrograde, balloon angioplasty, and then restoring flow. So in summary, uh, use the approach that's most comfortable for you. Uh, I recommend ultrasound, uh, as it may decrease time to access and avoid unnecessary radiation. So with that, I'll stop. Thank you.